Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle Channel. This video is a look at how I will be doing the single speed setup for the BBS HD. This will be using a 42T to a 42T at the back for that golden one to one ratio that served me so well with this bike so far. This is a motor that is going to be modified with the upgrade kit that we make and will be reaching RPMs of over 13,000. So in order to keep the motor happy, you really do need to use this kind of ratio because this allows the motor to reach these kind of RPMs and not get bogged down and build up heat. If you did this with a regular stock BBS HD though, you'd only be trundling along around 15 kilometers an hour and you'd be kept passed by granny on her scooter. So this setup with these gears here, it really only works when you're using the upgrade kit like ours here. There's also going to be no cable running back for a derailleur either because I want to keep this build as clean and simple as possible. So the only thing going to the back is going to be this brake cable here. You don't even need to have a speed sensor with this kind of setup because you can pull the speed directly from the hall sensor in the motor. So this here is the finished setup for the gearing. And what we have here is a 42T Lecky at the front and also a 42T at the back. I did originally want to try out um, this uh, 40T here um, because that would have enabled me to use the, the gear sprocket adapter that we make. Um, unfortunately, uh, it didn't quite work out with getting the chain um, optimally tight and compact. So for the moment, I'm using this 42T and I'm going to be getting a new 42T to replace this one because it is getting towards the end in terms of in terms of where there is getting to be just a little bit of sharking starting to happen on that. But I have got thousands and thousands of kilometers on that gear running at high power, so I can't really complain too much. Um, but that will be replaced and that will give me the nice, uh, nice narrow wide. Um, people are actually doing all sorts of cool things with these right now. Uh, I'll put up a few photos of what Dags is doing uh, with his. He's got it set up so he's got two different types of sprocket or two different sizes on his rear and a little granny gear to get him home if he runs into any battery related issues. So you can see that up on the screen right now. Anyway, I'm kind of digressing there, but it's a brutally simple system. Um, you basically get the chain as tight as possible. Um, this will keep it nice and tight without it being too tight and causing undue wear on any of the sprockets. And then it's being kept tight with this very simple chain tensioner um, that's been fixed down onto the bottom here. And there are many, many different ways of, of getting this to work, uh, but this is the, the method that I settled on. And I'm gonna go through the actual process now of how I got to that and why I decided on the 42T to the 42T and why this um, 40T wasn't the, wasn't the best option for me. So the first stage with this is to make sure that you've got a really nice straight chain line to the front sprocket, to the rear sprocket. So I'm using these polycarbonate spacers here to basically build out the rear here. And um, I'm gonna get the, uh, the last one on. So this is the sprocket adapter going on um, here as well. And this is sized for with the Shimano SRAM splines. And then you finish it off with a few more spacers here to the top. And then you, you use the, uh, the little lock ring that you get with your normal rear cluster to lock it all into place. So once you've got the stack on, uh, it's a case of just trying it on the back of the bike and seeing if you've got the chain line on. And if it's not good, then you just rearrange it until you get a nice straight chain line. So it's kind of tricky to show this, but just, just looking at this by eye, um, I can see that the the line here from this sprocket is kind of lining up with the chain stay here. And if I follow back the chain stay here, it looks like it's reasonably close then with the rear sprocket here. So it's a reasonably good straight chain line there. So I'm gonna use this anyway, because this, this isn't the one I'm using finally, but it is gonna show you what I mean with regards to getting the, the chain tension right and why I went with the 42 to 42. So it's a little tricky to see here, but trying to get this chain as tight as possible with the 40T, it just won't overlap the right part of the chain to allow you to hook it together. So you can't pull the chain tighter than it can go. So 
I'll show you now what it looks like if I connect this up with the chain tensioner. So this is with the 40T at the back and with the chain tensioner in place. And what I found was that it kind of pushed the chain further away from the rear sprocket. So you get less chain wrap around here. And I wanted to get as much chain wrap as possible around here. And I also wanted to use this part of the chain tension as a brace against this part here. So I guess I could have manufactured a different part in order to move this all around. But with the, 40T, with the 42T looking so nice, I decided that I would go with the 42T and keep it with the with the one to one ratio. And honestly, that that one to one ratio has served me really, really well with the fat bike anyway. I mean, there are like definitely like many ways that, that you can skin the cat with this one. Um, lightning rods, for example, make some parts that would allow this chain tensioner to be moved down here and into a, a different position. And uh, that is definitely doable as well. Um, I'm just going with what with what I picked and uh, we can see we can see how, how that works in terms of uh, in terms of getting the bike running. I mean, it, it might work. It might work OK like this. Um, but uh, I think um, for the time being, I'm going to go with the 42T to the 42T. So anyway, I'm going to get my setup back together here and get that all done. And then from here, the next part is I'm going to be showing how the upgrade kit with the, with the ASI back 855 all goes together with this. And I'll show you how I'm going to do my wiring to keep everything nice and clean. Cause really there is not, there is not much wiring that's going to be on this at all. There's going to be the main run up to the front here and there's a single brake coming to the back and that's going to give it a really, really nice clean look. So anyway, that's how I've been doing the chain tensioning for the single sprocket setup. Uh, as always, thanks for watching and a huge thanks to the channel members that make this all possible. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.